Hello everybody. I wanted to show you a couple of things. I wanted to show you first how you can get some extremely good efficiency by using programmable blocks. So I've made two fighters. I've made this scaffold, but I've also made a finished fighter, and we're going to look at both of them. The reason I left this as a scaffold is because I wanted to show you really clearly what I'm doing. This is a fighter with three heavy engines pointed backwards and two heavy engines pointed in every other direction. But it only has four small reactors. That's not enough to run even one heavy engine. So I'm making up the difference with batteries. There's one vanilla battery, and there's a bunch of small little custom batteries. These batteries are not super powered, they're not cheat batteries, they are really crappy, but they needed to be there for padding purposes. So managing batteries is a real nightmare because the batteries are very strong-headed. They don't really understand how to do things more efficiently than you might think. So what I've done is I have created an AI to run my batteries. Freya. Freya in this case will try and keep my batteries charged to 95% because normally she'd aim for 100 but this ship does not have the juice required to actually charge up all of its batteries. Now, if we were to run uh, full out, you can look at the lower right hand corner and see that our power usage is about half. So all of our batteries open at the same time gets us to about 50% use on our three primary heavy engines. Of course, if we do everything at once, we can still overload. But this is a super, super fast chip, and even after I add armor, it's going to be super, super fast. And the reason it can do that is because of Freya. If we look over here, you can see that Freya is charging that battery 3 at the moment, and now she's going to switch over and charge all the other batteries. She's trying to keep us optimally charged. Moreover, if things get really hairy, she'll actually enter into battle mode, where she runs every tick instead of every second. It's and very... That's the one. So now she's running every frame, or every tick, which means she can really keep our batteries charged most optimally. Also, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, because she'll run a timer of your choice when she enters into battle mode and exits battle mode. Let's go ahead and see if she can exit battle mode now. I think she's stuck panicked here. Yeah. This ship isn't... Um, the reactors are really a little bit too light. I was, I was doing that as an example. Let's go and pop over to this ship, which is the Longbow, or as it's known here, the Antenna. <laughs> the Longbow uh, uses some modded components, most notably snipers. It's got these four sniper rifles. Now, I have got this one here broken. I'm not sure what's wrong with it. I, I keep trying to fix it, but for now, it's three sniper rifles, uh, one of which doesn't work. I mean, one, three that do work and one that doesn't. It's also covered in heavy armor, and this brings us to the second point of the day. How do you do armor efficiently? And the answer is not simply coat everything in heavy armor. You actually want to think about what happens to armor when it gets hit, because the biggest threat that you face against light arms fire is how your heavy armor will deform. Because as the heavy armor deforms, it can deform into something and just do serious damage. Uh, for example, these engines. If one of the pieces of heavy armor deforms into the side of an engine, the engine just explodes. It doesn't matter how much health it had left. And that's really ridiculous, but it is something that you can take care of by putting physics objects inside of your armor. I'm using wheels. See? Now these physics objects will prevent the armor from bending in at all. Not only will that prevent it from bending into anything valuable, it'll also prevent it from bending. And that means that it'll have a lot less damage done to it, because it'll just sit there and resist everything. Anyway, this is a fully functional ship, aside from the one missing... Um, the one missing gun. And you can see that it works just fine. It has some pretty good acceleration. It can hold its own in any given kind of fight. Largely because batteries are incredibly light. This is intended to fight against capital ships. It's got the mobility to stay ahead of turrets, and it's got the pinpoint accuracy to deal with them. So if we come upstairs, we can deal with the other half of the turrets. There we go. So this is a very, very powerful ship. 
And I really like the design. If I can get that last gun working, I'll consider this to be Steam Workshop ready. Of course, I do want to show you what I mean by armor. Because this armor is substantial. So let's go back over to the Tripoli so it can shoot at us. This ship has a much better balance of reactor to battery. Alright, so let's find the Tripoli. Uh, there you are. Oh, don't die! I am in survival mode right now, so it's very possible for me to die. And where are you? Oh, there you are. Staring straight at me. So let's go ahead and talk about how effective this physics armor is. And I think the best way to do that is to just target it straight up and show you how much damage it doesn't take. These are assault rifles, uh, which are assault, assault cannons, rather, which are, I would say, slightly more effective than... Um, I meant to turn on the camera, I forgot I didn't have it triggered. Which I would say are slightly more effective than the default cannons. So if we were to fire on this iron, you can see that it took a lot of damage to the same armor block to even start to penetrate. If we go over to the other side, and we start to like this, you can see that we haven't actually damaged anything inside of the ship yet. We haven't even destroyed the wheel yet. There, we finally destroyed the wheel. And what this means is that the ship can take an incredible amount of weapon fire damage. It can also take a fair amount of damage um, from, uh, from missiles, because each missile hit will destroy down to the wheel, but it won't destroy anything inside of that. And it will also take... Uh, uh, the only way to really damage this ship seriously is to puncture it with another ship. If you ram this ship, it will suffer a lot of damage. And I'll show you that in a minute. So let's go make sure that we didn't suffer any damage. Lots of scrap metal. I like that addition. Oh, look at that. We actually managed to punch through, but we didn't actually damage anything. We just barely managed to punch through. Um, yep. Everything's still working. If I were to accelerate... Well, we have some crap in here, but other than that... We are still fully functional. So that is... We do appear to have lost some of our uh, gyroscopes. But that's not a big deal. They must have been in some of this body cavity when it was hit. There's the wheel. So you can see this is pretty effective. In comparison, this is... Um, Let's see, did we hit any of the upper engines here? This area here is only light armor, uh, because it's not critical, but I didn't hit it at all, so you can't really see. If I had hit the light armor, you'd be able to tell, because it gets ripped apart immediately. So, um, I wanted to show you that difference. Let me go ahead and just shoot some light armor and show you the absolute uh, difference in how effective these things are. You can see how the light armor just immediately gets destroyed. Alright, so let's go ahead and ram this guy, and, uh, and you know, let's presume that he's going to say, okay, he's ramming me, let me turn a little bit. So let's go ahead and just ram him right here. Yeah. Boom. I survived that somehow, but the Tripoli did not. And let's see what kind of damage we took. So I actually rammed him really close to the cockpit, and I did end up destroying the cockpit. Now, as I said, ramming damage is what this ship is weak to, and you can clearly see that while we took almost no damage from sustained weapon fire, all of our interior area was just demolished by the ramming. Uh, we lost the cockpit and all of the guns. If we'd rammed in the back, we would have suffered the same amount of damage to the reactor and the cargo bay. So there is really no good place to get rammed, uh, unless, of course, it's your engine nacelle. Feel free to turn so your engine nacelle takes the brunt of the punishment. 
Anyway, this isn't related to merge blocks moving around, but it is a very powerful tool to let you get the most performance out of your ships. Uh, and if there is very much interest, I may go ahead and upload the uh, the longbow and the Tripoli when the Tripoli is finished, uh, and let you play around with them and see how that works. If there isn't any interest, then I won't. Let me know.